cute. Oh, thank you. I've never filmed in front of other people before. It's making me nervy. Blah, blah. Cynthia? Hey guys, welcome to my video. <laughs> I have to look up a synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to another weekly video because I post every week. Just kidding. Okay, so my plan for this semester, um, hopefully it works out. I would like to post 10 videos. I have all 10 sort of planned out. Maybe I could interchange a couple for a different video. I will probably post two in January just because it's kind of a time sensitive video, but the rest of the videos are going to be variable based on my class load, how much work I have, how much time I have to edit them. So those will probably be sporadic throughout the semester, but if I can post more than 10 videos, I will try to. Oh, I need to charge the battery. Don't die. Don't die, battery. Don't die. Boop beep. Boop beep. Fishies, are you okay going without a filter? Not you're sacrificing your fish's life for a YouTube video. We are. Battle scars. Back in. We are rolling. What was I talking about? Well, yeah, so the plan is to post 10 videos this semester. My goal this semester is to be better about my time management. I thought I had good time management, and then I got to Purdue, and Purdue said, Ha, you're funny. Did not have time. But I also am getting a new laptop on Thursday. I'm filming this on Monday and so that'll also make it a lot easier for me to edit videos because it has a better graphics card, more storage, um, more RAM and than this laptop that I have right now which is actual trash. So we are hopeful and I'm excited. Alright, without further ado, let's get into my 2020 wrap up. Okay, so in 2020 I read a total of 59 books which was made up of 17 audiobooks. 32 physical books, 29 of them are YA, and then 30 were non-YA. I read four horror, six classics, 23 fantasy books, uh, 16 fiction, two drama, uh, three graphic novels. As for star ratings, overall, I think this was a pretty good year. I seem to enjoy a lot of the books I read because there was 27 five-star reviews, uh, 16 four-star, um, five three-star reviews, no two-star and then two one-star reviews, and then nine of the books I read were not rated. So I read six books in 2020 that ended up being my favorite books of the year. The first one, I finished the second book of the Kingkiller Chronicles, The Wise Man's Fear. If you've seen any of my other videos, I've probably spoken about the Kingkiller Chronicles, The Name of the Wind, before. Um, but this story follows our main character, Kavoth, basically a genius. I don't even know. He is this notorious genius wizard. Stories of his adventures have been told all over the world, and so the book is technically told over the course of three days. The first book is the first day where Kavoth, he's an older man uh, running his own tavern now, and this man called the Chronicler visits the tavern and learns that this is Kavoth, and so he wants to write down Kavoth's story. And the story is basically told through flashbacks of Kvothe narrating his story. And the second book is The Second Day, The Wise Man's Fear, and then the third book should be The Third Day. However, I'm pretty sure Pat Patrick Rothfuss has been writing that book for seven, ten years now? We're possibly getting the third book this year. It's called The Doors of Stone, but I feel like Patrick Rothfuss promising to put out this book every year is kind of the same as me promising to put out a video every week. So we'll see about that. <laughs> my second favorite book of the year was a trilogy. I read the Ark of the Scythe trilogy by Neil Shusterman, and this series was genuinely amazing. It was action-packed, thought-provoking, and if you think about it, a lot of what happened in the trilogy can relate to what's happening in nowadays, especially with all of the police brutality, all the political mess that's going on. We have Rowan and Citra. So Rowan and Citra live in a world that has conquered death. Technology has figured out how to turn back the body clock so that you can basically be immortal and you can be revived if you ever die, however you die. In a world with no death, there obviously is going to be a few problems like overpopulation. So there comes in this organization called the Scythedom, where these scythes are the only people that have the license to kill and control the population. Rowan and Citra, who are teenagers, they are selected to become apprentices apprentice, apprentices to the Scythedom. If you like books that explore the concept of gray morality and um, explores the meaning of right versus wrong and the meaning of life and what it means to be alive, then this is definitely a book for you. It's also a great fantasy 
very action-packed, very suspenseful. It will keep you on your toes until the very end of the third book. I highly recommend. The next favorite of 2020 is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reed, and I've definitely talked about this book before on the channel, and it just, it really blows your mind. It gives you the same vibe as an A24 uh, horror movie. It's very trippy, very confusing until the very end, but even after you finish the book, you probably will still have a lot of questions. It's very unsettling in the subtlest of ways, so you would be reading it and you would be very uncomfortable, but not really realize why you're uncomfortable. And it's just genuinely a very surreal experience reading this book and I loved it so much. But you've, you've probably noticed that there is a movie out on Netflix. Don't watch it. I Please take my word for it. It's not good. Just read the book. My fourth favorite series book of 2020 was the All for the Game series by Nora Sakovic. The first one being the Foxhole Court, the second one being the the Raven King? Yes, and then the third one being the King's Men. This one follows our main character, Neil, uh, who's a player of this game called Exy, and he gets um, contracted. Oh my god, shut up. So our main character, Neil, gets contracted from high school to play with the Foxhole Court, which is a college Exy team. Um, but little do we know that Exy is kind of a cover, a front for a lot of nefarious dealings going on underneath, and it turns out Neil is kind of wrapped up in this, but we don't really know too much. A lot of details about his past are revealed throughout the books, and it gets crazier and crazier, and every single teenager on this Exe team desperately needs therapy, and I love all of them. I would die for all of them. I would legitimately take a bullet for each and every single player on that team, and it's honestly crazy. Okay, so my next favorite of 2020 is kind of kind of a toss-up and I'm not really sure why I put it on this list but I did enjoy reading A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara even though it made me so angry so freaking angry I had planned on doing a book talk on this book but I really I think the statue of limitations is up on that by now but also I don't really know if it's worth it because there are so many other videos on this on the YouTube universe about this book and also I'm just so angry about the book. Now don't get me wrong, it is on my favorites list because it was written spectacularly. I ended up falling in love with all of the characters and I was genuinely engrossed in the book and I cried so hard and whenever a book makes me cry that means I'm really emotionally invested and it connects with me really well and so in that regard that was a great book. Soon I will also get to my least favorite books and you'll see that it's also on that list and I'll talk about why. The last favorite book of 2020 that I just most recently finished from Blood and Ash follows our main character Penelope who is called the Maiden. She is this chosen religious figure chosen by the gods and she must be very sheltered, very Rapunzel-like up in her tower if that makes sense. And Basically, she is told from a very young age that the whole country, the whole future of the citizens in this uh, kingdom relies on her and her ability to ascend when she turns 19. So Penelope ha has to kind of choose between her sense of duty to her kingdom and to her people between the life that she really wants to live and this romance that she wants to have. These are just so good. I listened to them through audiobook and I definitely recommend that because the narrator has this great accent that she uses for Hawk. So if you are in the mood for a steamy fantasy enemies to lovers type romance, I definitely recommend picking up From Blood and Ash. It is genuinely going to be a wild ride and you will love it, I promise. Okay, now on to the juicy list of this video, my least favorites of 2020. And I have four books on this list. These are the four books that I read and I genuinely hated so much. I could not understand why I was still reading them while I was reading them. Like halfway through, I'm like, why, why don't I just put this down? And you know what, for some reason I didn't. But I really should have because these books were literal trash and a waste of time. I'm talking about my least favorite books that I read all year. Oh, like all of them? She's yeah, cool. like all of them. Well, okay, so no, the first no. one 
that is my least favorite is called The Vore by B. Catling. The Vore? The Vore. Like, like eating? No. <laughs> uh, no, this is called the V-O-R-R-H. V-O-R-R-H. And that's very important because The Vore is a forest, not the other thing. Um, but after reading this book honestly and like getting to know about the author, I would not be surprised if he did mean the other thing. Like... Honestly, this book was messed up. Things I didn't like about it. I hated all of the characters. All of them. <laughs> and I would, okay, I made a list of all the characters and like their um, personality traits that are the most distinctive. And I honestly can't read most of these to you. They're that bad. We have a bratty cyclops, a hitman, um, a dude who made a bow and arrow out of his dead wife That's file. so romantic though. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, racist white supremacist, sexy beetle robot, yeah, probably Original. we'll cut that one out of the video, uh, demons that hang human eyeballs from their armpits and wear skulls as underwear, and... It sounds like, uh, someone was like, bro, how weird of a fucking book can you write and get published? And get <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what this book was. I read a Goodreads review that was like, this book reads as a, like, an old white man psychedelic or like Rips. psychoanalytic sessions and it's so true this book is literally insane this book was was recommended to me um, as kind of like a buddy reading system and the, the person who gave it to me was like this book is weird are you okay with that and I was like yeah I like weird I was not prepared for that weird <laughs> uh, but in all honesty um, the weird is that actually the only thing I liked about this book. It was very creative and you couldn't predict it. But you also couldn't predict it because there was basically no plot, so nothing happened. But, uh, <laughs> it was very unpredictable, it was very creative, but that's about where it stops. Because everything else is just unsettling and really creepy and throughout the entire thing there's this weird sexual undertone where everything is about sex. Literally everything. Definitely sounds like it was written by a man. The next book on this list is A Little Life. Uh, I told you it would be here, and here it is. Um, <laughs> so, as I said, this book was written well, and I enjoyed reading it. However, I think that it was basically 800 pages of nothing. So the book is about basically this main character named Jude, who has a lot of mental health problems. He was very traumatized as a child, and he's sort of battling with the aftermath of that. It's like, he has, he has such a good support system, and everyone loves him so much. And you would think the book would be about him, Jude, like, learning how to heal, learning how to love himself, learning how to, like, accept love from the people around him who are obviously like trying to give it to him but he he does not learn any of that um and this book basically tells you that no matter who loves you no matter um how much you try to make your life better, no matter how much you try to turn your life around, it all means nothing and your life is worthless. That's what this book told me. Just go ahead and sit this one out. This book basically has every trigger warning you could ever think of. If you want to cry, if you really want to have a good cry for about like a month, then <laughs> go ahead and read this book. The third book on this list was Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Uh, Jane Eyre. <laughs> I, I also genuinely hated this book. Not as much as the others. Um, I had to read this for class, which is the reason why I finished this book instead of just putting it down. I just hated all the characters and I was tired of all the misogyny, racism, and classism. Yeah, that was that's basically why I hated it. And also Charlotte Bronte has a way of writing that is so wordy and dramatic and flowery and I found it very annoying. So, yeah. On this list, the last book was another classic that I read, Crime and Punishment by Theodore Dostoevsky. The Dostoevsky? Don't look at me, I don't know. I, I, this book gave me a headache reading it, and I'm pretty sure that was the intention, because um, this book gets you in the mind of um, a man who committed murder um, in like the first chapter, and then you kind of follow his descent into madness, and you kind of get to understand his whole god complex and his 
absolute craziness. Literarily, it's kind of impressive how well um, Dostoevsky gets into the mind of a murderer. So that was the wrap up of everything that I read in 2020. Thank you guys for watching and coming back and seeing all these videos. I really appreciate appreciate you guys sticking with me after I took so long to post something. I promise I will be more vigilant about posting things. At least I will try to be. I'll see you in the next video, which I will post. I promise. I'm literally filming like six of these videos today. So if, if I don't post it, um, know that it is filmed and it might be edited. <laughs> okay, bye! Bye! Don't hold your breath. <laughs> bye! I love you guys. Good night.